Hi everyone, today we're going to look at how to make API calls that require changing parameters. Previously, we've looked at how to make API calls that don't change, but today we'll go one step further. The biggest example of this is when you need to inject an API key into a URL string, or if you want the user to be able to search for a custom item. Let's get started. First, we're going to create an iOS app and just call it anything. I'm going to call it just a Giphy, let's call it a Giphy API, let's say. Um, keep everything the same, a Swift UI, no need to change language or use core data or include tests. It's uh, all going to be fine and create it and give it a second to set everything up. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Once everything is set up, let's clean up our working space here because we don't need most of this stuff to distract us. And we don't need the content preview because we're not going to be using preview, we're going to be using a simulator here. So let's compile this first before we start changing things to make sure everything works okay. And the app should launch and just say, hello world, there we go, everything is good. So when we're fetching an API, the basic thing we need is we need some sort of a function to, to go and actually go fetch that for us. So let's start very fast by saying function and fetch API. We don't need any parameters here, so that's going to be blank and we're going to right away go ahead inside this function and say, first thing we need to fetch an API is a URL. So let's say let URL equal a URL type with a string. And we're going to put our string here, which I'll uh, show you how to do that. If you go to the Giphy developer site, uh, you'll see this website and you'll have to register. The registration process is very easy. I've already done it. Once you, you're in, you will be asked to create a new app in order to get your own API key. You can see my API key here already. I will deactivate this as soon as I post the video, so this will be inactive for anyone else, uh, so it doesn't matter that it's visible. Once you have an API key, then you're ready to go into the API Explorer, and here you can start testing various ways to use the API. You can see here uh, your app and API combination is the one that you would have created, and we want a Giphy public API here. We're not going to do anything with stickers for now, just keeping it simple. And we want a random uh, GIF for the first step of our app. So if you if you just go visit this URL, you'll get this. It's a very big data file, it's JSON, so we don't care about a lot of these things, but it is a data uh, file that we'll need to read and use in our own application. So I'm just going to grab this URL and put it inside our string here. So we're going to let this be the URL that our fetch API function is going to call. Okay. With that, what we need to create is, well, we need a URL session, and this is a pretty standard way of fetching an API you may have seen on other videos. And here we plug in our URL, and we have to tell it with a bang that says, we expect that we know that this is going to exist for sure. This URL is going to be there. Don't worry about it because it's hard coded. In other situations, uh, you may notice that we, can, if if you bang should be used very sparingly because sometimes your application will crash. But in this case, we know for certain that this works. Um, and you can see our API key is actually in here. That's that's where it goes in the request itself. So here we're going to say. The typical say data uh, response or error is what we're going to get from the from the API and th there's much better ways to set up functions like this I'm going to just keep it very simple very straightforward and I'm gonna say if let data equal to data then uh, we're going to do something all this says is if we get something in the data from the if we get some data from the URL, then we're going to use it. And here we're going to say if let a some let's call it a Giphy decoder, for example, uh, Giphy decoder, and we're going to say try 
JSON decoder. We're, gonna, we're creating a new JSON decoder and we're immediately calling a decode on it. And this is where we'll need to tell it what pattern to look forward to. But we're going to take from this data variable here. So if this data variable exists, we're going to take it and we're going to pull it apart based on a pattern that we care about. And that's why we needed to see what this data pattern is here. So we can build a pattern that resembles this that we can tell our function to use. So outside of this struct and outside of it, we're going to create a couple of other structs to represent this data structure. The first one is going to be, let's see, is going to be a struct with, uh, we're going to call it, um, let's say, GIF if you structure let's say and it has to be complied to the decodable protocol and inside we're going to say okay well there's data so we're going to say let data equal uh, or it's going to be data data is going to be of a type and it's going to be this other object which is inside this object so it's going to be we have to call it something so i'm going to call it data structure and then I'm going to define data structure itself. So struct data structure, structure, come on. Okay, and you can see it recognized it up here. This also has to comply to decodable, I think. And here is where we can pull any of these pieces of data that we want. And all I care about is this URL. So I'm just gonna say, let URL be of type string. Okay, so that should be all we need really, uh, because now we can say, hey, JSON decoder, when you get the data from this URL, look for this pattern, look for a data object that in itself has another object, which has a URL, which is a string, and it will match this. We don't care about any of these other things, so we're not gonna specify them here, but if you find this pattern, pull it out and put it into this variable here, Giphy decoder. Um, or let's call it decoded Giphy or something. Um, slightly more descriptive. Uh, and the way we tell it to use the pattern is say just um, Giphy structure dot self. Okay. So now this JSON decoder is going to look for this. If it finds it, it's going to stick it in this variable. And what we need to tell it then is, okay, assuming that that happens, what do we want to do with that data that's in decoded Giphy? Well, we have to store it somewhere in our struct here. And we're going to call it, let's say, a variable. And we're going to call the variable mm, GIF, uh, GIF URL, let's say. Oops. Uh, GIF URL. And that's going to be a string. And we actually have to initialize it. So I'm going to say string with parentheses, meaning I'm actually giving it, assigning it a value of an empty string because when we create this struct, it can't be blank. You can't just say type string, you have to give it a value. So it starts out being with a blank uh, string. And then we're going to, when we come down here, we're going to then put a value inside this variable. And we're going to say self gif URL equals to this decoded, decoded giphy dot data dot url and the reason it's dot data dot url is because data and url down here it's sort of each layer is how you drill down into the value and because url is a string and gif url is a string we can go ahead and assign this to this and we're getting an error because self is immutable and that's because here if we want this variable to actually change over the lifetime of the struct, we, mean, we need to say state. Otherwise, Swift assumes that this is actually not going to change ever. And it just says, oh, okay, empty string, done, forever. But if you put state in front of it, it, it tells it, well, we might actually want to change this later because here we are assigning it a different value. So now it works. Okay, assuming all of this works, We've gone quite a while without building our app and seeing if we got any errors or issues. So let's go ahead and actually build this and, and see what happens after we clean up our code a bit. Okay, 
let's build it and see if we get a URL string. Well, we get hello world. That's not great. Okay, why? Because this still says hello world here. That's pretty simple. So instead we want to say, hey, the value of the string should be gif URL. Okay, that's your value now. And we actually missing quite a few things now. We need to run fetch API, right? We're not running it anywhere. We have it defined here as a function, but we've never actually run it. So what we want to do is maybe just for simplicity, I'm going to get rid of padding and I'm going to say add a button here. Okay, button. And the label of the button is going to be fetch gif and the action of the button is going to be fetch API. Uh, I'm going to keep this all in one line because it's easier to read. Typically this would be broken on different lines, so forgive me for the not great syntax here, but I think this is so simple that it's fairly okay. So this just means like we have a button with this title and it does this action when you click it. Okay, so it's we'll click it, we'll run this function, and hopefully we'll get the new value of gif url oh one other thing every time you have url session don't don't forget at the end of it to do resume because even though it's called resume uh, it actually means run it uh, it doesn't mean resume to something that was running it just means like just make sure you run it it's a bit confusing the first time you come across this but trust me that's how that works so let's just run it and see what happens And there is our button. If we click it, we get our little string here. Now we can't do anything with it. So, you know, we can keep clicking it and getting various different URLs. And that's great, great. But wouldn't it be better if we could click on it? And there is a, not a very straightforward way of doing this, but there is a, a way that is good to know. So we're gonna say like, on um, on click essentially on tap gesture on tap gesture we're going to do okay we're going to say let's create a url and the url is going to be the same gif url that we have that we're displaying in the text that's an actual url but we need to just tell it it's like hey this is a url and with a string there we go and we're going to say the gif url is our string okay so we have our url now and we're gonna use guard let and we're gonna let's mm, call this uh giphy giphy url maybe my naming convention is all over the place on this but just stick with me uh, we're gonna say we're this is URL and then we're also going to say UI application shared can open URL and this is our Giphy URL else we're going to return essentially this is a check saying like well if we can assign Giphy URL to this value which is up here and we can check that we can open this URL, which we said here, then all is good. But if, if we cannot do these things, just return and stop here because something's wrong. But if it clears, it goes on to the next line and here we can actually go ahead and say UI application shared uh, open and go ahead and open our Giphy URL. And that should open in our Safari if all goes well. Okay, we're gonna fetch our URL when we're gonna click on it. We get taken to giphy.com and it's going to display the URL of this GIF that we're using. Um, hopefully the URLs that you get are all funny and not confusing. We now need to make sure that we can actually search for things and make sure that our API can be kept in a separate variable. So you'll notice that here 
the API is uh, the API key is actually part of the string. Now we can pull this out and say let API key equal this. Whoops. There we go. And here we can just go ahead and plug it in and say use this variable instead. So in, in many actual real apps, what you would do is you would keep this in a separate file somewhere secure because it's a secret thing. But just to demonstrate how it works and plugging it into an, a string that you're then using as a URL, that's how you go about it. And you'll see next we're going to use this for a search function. And when we use it for a search function, we're actually going to need to use a different API. So I'll show you that right now. If we, if we go ahead and come back to the Giphy developer site and we select, instead of random, we go to search, it changes the parameters that you can have in here and it changes the string. And it, you'll also notice that if we search for it, you'll notice that it will change the data structure as well. If we search for, let's say, cat, uh, and we do send request, we'll get, the difference is that we get an array of objects before we didn't have the square parenthesis here indicating that we only had one object here, but now we have 25 because the setting here you'll notice is actually 25, how many results you get. So let's just start by grabbing the string for the search API and we're going to stick it in here and you'll notice there are some differences. For example, this is random and other. So that's why we're just gonna paste it in here. We're gonna recreate what we just did with inputting our API key as a parameter. And you'll notice it says cat here. That's what we typed um, when we copied it. We want to be able to change this. So we need another variable to be able to change that. And we'll say state var search string, for example, uh, string. Again, initialize with an empty string. <clears throat> and here we're going to say, okay, instead of hard coding something, we're gonna say self.search string. So now every time we run this uh, fetch API function, we're actually going to be pulling the values for API key from here, and we're going to be pulling the value for what we're searching for from up here. So yeah, so now we actually need to find a way to, to give the, the user a way to change this value up here. And the way we're going to do that is with a text field text field and the way text field work are uh, you need to give it a string that is sort of the placeholder text in the in the text field so i'm going to say search gifs and then you need to say uh you need to tell it okay well that's fine but what do i tie this to what variable am i tying this information to and it's text and dollar sign search string the dollar sign indicates that it's bound to this variable. So every time we change the text within this text field, it's going to update this variable up here, which is good. That's what we want so that we have the latest ver uh, value of this string every time we need to do a fetch. So I'll demonstrate how this works in just a second. So I think um, that should be fine. Now we should be able to get a field that we can search and get a GIF related to our search term. So here, it's not formatted it great, but you'll notice over here, if I just type something like, um, let's say sky, I should be able to fetch and get something. Ah, actually, we missed something, apologies. So if, if we stop the simulator for a second, you'll notice the because the data structure was different, because here we have an array of objects, we need to modify our structure here. Before we were saying this data was only one other data structure. There was just one other object here, but now we have an array of them. So we have to be careful to make sure that our mapping of the data is the same as what we're getting from the API. Otherwise it's not going to work. And as soon as we change that, you notice the Xcode started complaining because now we're telling it, oh, you're getting multiple, an array of ob objects. And here it's saying, well, which URL do you want me to grab then if, if I have many different objects? 
So we're just going to say grab the first one, even though we're getting 25, let's just for example focus on the first one. And the way you grab the first item of an array is if our data is an array, you say data square parenthesis uh, square bracket zero means this is the first item of the array. If you say one, that'll be the first one. You have to be very careful with these things sometimes because if you say like, give me the 10th item of an array and there's only five, that's a great way to crash your application. Uh, so there's a lot of checks and things that we're not doing here. We're just assuming it works. Like for example, you know, you can use this error and say like, if you get an error, like do something else, don't go forward with all this code. But as I said, for an example, this, this works. So let's run it and see what happens. If we run it and do, and we search, let's say sky again, and we fetch that, we get a URL and we click the URL and we get a picture of a sky. Awesome. Cool. Let's see if that works with anything else. So let's say if I type, um, let's see dog, for example, what would that get us? We get a dog. There we go. Uh, so, so it works. This is something we can play with more. Obviously we can improve the appearance. Just like one thing I, I would do is just multi-line text alignment is a way for you to make sure it's centered at least. Uh, it looks a little bit better. Not that we're going for a design award on this app, but at least uh, it's some more, a little bit nicer to, to work with. Yeah, let's let's see something else. Um, coffee. What do we get if we do coffee here? There we go. Uh, we got something that looked like a coffee mug. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot more things we can do with this. But for example, you can actually display the image here, but that will take a bit more code and I didn't want to be distracted. This is a very simple way to just demonstrate how you can fetch an API that has different terms inside it. A user inputted term and an API key, which is uh, somewhere outside of the actual string of the URL that you're fetching. And all of the rest of the fetching a URL is pretty standard code. Hopefully nothing too surprising. But um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. If you like the video, please subscribe and, and thumbs up and I'll keep making more videos. Thank you guys for watching and come back for more.